Chim-chim-a-dee, chim-chim-a-dee, chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-chim-ch
just, I'll show you the shorts in a second. And they're padded as to um, save my, my manhood and hopefully still enable me to have children and hold them in life. It's, it's quite scary here because back in London when I did it, when I played Mary in London, I always had my harness put on by the stage manager. But here, I'm in charge of it myself. Not a good thing, really, when you're flying God knows how many feet up above people's heads. But there you go. I'm taking my life into my own hands here. Actually, there's, there's quite a big difference here between the flight um, here and in London. In London, my flight was quite a lot slower. I swoop all the way down here, and I go so close to the mezzanine, you call it. It's the circle back home. And I'm literally, I feel like face to face with people. It's wonderful to see their reaction. And I'm talking like, not just kids, but like grown adults with their mouths just going, are we seeing this person flying above our heads? And then this is the bit that the mic guys are always absolutely terrified about. And I might never run this way so I don't accidentally get any on your lens because I'm sure that the Broadway.com money man will not be too happy about you having to buy a new lens because I've got a hairspray all over it. I might um, disappear in here for a sec and get on a pair of pants because I don't think you really want to see that. It's probably the last thing you want to see is me with my pants off. So I'll be back in one moment. This is the wonderful Gary who looks after me throughout the whole show, transforms me into Mary. Thankfully, to this, um, from this rather different looking person. Gary's doing my pin curls, which then goes into a stocking cap. It goes up into the wig, so you can't see a, a wig line. And because I'm blonde, obviously, um, he has to paint it every night. Here we go. How cool are these pants? They're actually a different check. The other check, I think, was a lot smaller but they weren't with a different fabric because obviously they ran out of the other stuff. But all the costumes, everything were all custom made for me, which is pretty, pretty sweet and cool. And I'm not complaining at all, considering, you know, I'll be in them for the next year. Yeah, I, I really don't know if you know about this, but there's a ghost here. I found out today, talking to somebody, there's a ghost called Olive at the New Amsterdam Theatre. And she was she was a Zigville girl, is that right? Yeah. Um, I there used to be a theatre, something, something oh, spooky. I think she might have been killed or something. Well, and um, and she haunts this theatre, but she only appears to men. She's an unusual ghost as well because she appears sort of fully with her feet and everything. You can see her. She's not just sort of a white willowy figure. She's an actual. She looks like a real person standing there. Spooky. I'm layering these costumes because in the first act, in Jolly Holiday, there is a transition where the whole stage turns from black and white basically to colour. And in that transition, there is um, very, very little time to actually get changed. So what we actually do is we underdress our colourful costumes underneath our um, other costumes so that we can literally run off, strip all this off, very, very, very quickly and just run back out on stage. Do you really want to see me in this? No. This is a wonderful look. This is, this is really attractive. This is all right, this bit. Then once you get on the other vest and then the jacket, it feels like I've, uh, I've eaten a whole cow. And this oh, goes over the top. Have you got that spell on you? There we are. Well, I'm putting her hair up to make it look like a natural hairline in the back. And then I'll paint it to make it blend with this color. Every night this has to happen for the transformation. I think it's honestly, he is the everyday man. He is the guy who is just, you know, could be anyone, 
walking down the street, he could be just, you know. And of the times, you know, he's the guy who's doing the most menial jobs of the era, you know, he's a chimney sweep, he's a street sweeper, he's, you know, plays the barrel organ for money and stuff like that. And literally, every time you see him, all he's got to say is great things, you know. Mary says, you're a chimney sweep now. He's covered in dust and dirt and looking like crap. And he turns around and goes, best view in the world, eh? <laughs> Which is just brilliant. And I think, you know, it's one of those things that everyone loves it because if we could all be more like that, we'd probably all be a lot happier. Well, let's go check up on Scarlet, eh? <laughs> oh, you're already. I am already. Oh, well, the show can't start without me. Yes, that's true. The show can't start without you. So I've got to get ready now. I've got to get my costume I'm on. I'm done. I'm signed, sealed, delivered. All right, guys. Thanks for following us around backstage. We had a ball, and we know you will have a ball too. So come see the show, come and see the show. we'll see you afterwards. See you soon. Bye.